Hey, welcome back to the studio. This is my day of play, where you're taken into the real events and actions of how it really went down before the process of editing and or cleaning up. This is how it really went. Now, although I've been crushed by the effects of COVID, the journey's been to keep marching forward. We begin things with actor Anders Keith, who just entered season two of Frasier on Paramount+. Plus. Critics are calling him an actor on the rise. And then we're going to follow that with a man who knows how to win, win, win. It's Stanley Cup winning coach Mike Keenan. This is my day of play, completely unedited in the way of meeting the wizard behind the curtain. Whoop, hello and good morning. I've got the wrong one plugged in. Hold on just one second here, sir. <laughs> There you go. You should be hooked up with me right now. You good? I'm Boy. good. Yeah. How are you guys right, doing my today? Friend. Here's Andrews. Take it away, Arrow. Good. Only a single today, Arrow. Okay. Thank you so much. Dude, I got to tell you, the, the show you're on, Frazier, season number two, this is the most attractive presentation. I have been with this show since episode number one when you guys did this, and, and you add such a major presence to the storyline. Thank you so much for saying that, Arrow. I appreciate that. How, what is it like to be on that set? Because I would be breaking out of character every five seconds because there's so much talent on there, and it's all about comedy that comes from out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, there, there, there are definitely some uh, some moments where we break. Uh, <laughs> uh, but thankfully, we get it, we get that out during rehearsal too. Yeah. We're we're rehearsing all week. And uh, so we usually know what's coming. Sometimes on the show night, though, either something isn't working or they just want to try something new. So the writers will come up and say, oh, try this. <laughs> and uh, they won't tell the other actors. And uh, <laughs> so the, some of those ones, you know, really catch you by surprise. It's, uh, it's a fun thing to be around. It's sort of like playtime or doing improv <laughs> i was going to ask you about that improv because when you've got that live audience right there with you i mean can you stray away a little bit from the writing well uh, a little bit yeah. a little bit you know I've, I've i've rephrased a couple lines but i've i've never completely gone off just you know we, we i don't want to waste their time too you know it could be a really bad idea whatever i think is going to be so funny yeah, but the thought of them changing a line and the others don't know about it, that to me, I mean, the, the reaction of, of Kelsey Grammer or somebody would be, I mean, it's, it's stunning is what it is. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I'm so attracted to Frazier. Well, uh, good, good. Yes. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the, a lot of that stuff is the stuff that really works and is humorous and stuff we realize on the fly. A new season means our relationship with you guys as characters. Last year, it was introducing you to our lives, and we really got into it. Now that storyline can grow even thicker. It, do, do you see it on your side? Uh, I do see it on my side. There's last last season, we were all trying to fill our, our parts as actors, and well, also inform the characters. And this one, that harmony is. Uh, even even further the writers and and the actors are working in tandem and it's uh it's a beautiful thing to see both uh, i i experienced it with my character and i watched my co-stars pokes uh really learning moving into this new character and and uh now we really get to experience now that we know them as you said well, I've always wondered if it's like a radio morning show where we've got to, when, when we bring people together for the very first time, it's all about body language and eye-to-eye -eye contact. Is it the same for you? Or Because you can't just go out there and just run off with a bunch of lines. There's got to be some sort of relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when I auditioned for the role, they uh, did what's called a chemistry read, right? Mm. So I, yeah, I went in a room with... Uh, Mr. Grammer and all the writers and uh, Mr. James Burroughs and uh, I, I read a scene with him and they seemed to think the chemistry was was good there and thankfully with everyone else it just seemed to work very naturally. I mean, uh, it would be a fault of mine, I think, if if I wasn't allowed to get along with everyone because mm -hmm. everyone is just so 
nice and funny. And as the youngest person in the cast, I have so much to learn from each of them. Wow, that's interesting you say the youngest person on the cast, and yet I feel like you're an old soul on the show, that, that you really do fit in with everybody. They, well, thanks for saying that. Uh, yes, the character definitely is a bit of an old soul. And I, I too, feel like an old soul sometimes. <laughs> uh, old soul of a shoe. <laughs> I, I've heard some rumors about your character this season, falling in love and gaining some power. Now, that right there tells me that there's a future storyline growing here, and it gets it gets me as a viewer excited about where they're going to take you. Uh, me, too. Me, too. I... Uh, you know, this uh, the character David is is a young man. He's not fully decided yet, and yeah. he still hasn't experienced a lot of life. And so we get we get to watch him experience a, a few more things for the first time. Yeah, how do you make David feel so real to us? I mean, because I mean, is that you sit? Do you guys sit down and break it down in the way of saying, "Okay, that was kind of an acting way of doing things." I need you to be more of a real David to to, to our viewers. Well, it, it's interesting. Uh, we've never we've never done that, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when I when I first auditioned for it, I did a I did a a take. The first take where it was a version of the character where he knew he was annoying you <laughs> and he enjoyed it. It was sort of like Bill Murray or Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Uh, and then I watched it and I was like, this is, this is. Did we get disconnected? Anders, you there? We can't hear you, Anders. Oh, what happened? <laughs> uh, hello? There, you're oh, back. There you oh, are. you're, you're back. back. Okay, I'm back. Where was I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, who cares? Anyway, I just realized I had to really be that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Is you can't. He doesn't know he's annoying. He just maybe is a little annoying sometimes, and he can't help that because he's just purely innocent. Wow. Don't Anywho. you? Don't you think that that David? Part of the prep of of making sure that David stays in character is everything that you do on that live stage in Pasadena. I mean, being right there on that stage, it, it, it it's got to prepare you for the stage of being on television. Uh, yes, yes, it it does, it does. Uh, with a normal play, we do have a bit more rehearsal. We only rehearse the episode for a week, and that's done in the traditional style of a sitcom where you only have a week. Uh, but something about re rehearsing it only for a week, just having the material makes everything feel very fresh and I think makes it almost impossible for it to feel canned mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you just have to know the lines and be that guy. And that's all you can really rely on besides uh, every, because everything else is there. You know, the sets are there, the costumes are there the hair and whatever else <laughs> your fellow actors are right there and they're ready to act with you. And so all you have to do is just show up and be that guy. And I guess in my case, I was that guy. Wow. You know, you really bring up a great point about everything that takes place before it reaches us on this side of the screen, because I mean, we, we get to see 22 minutes of a storyline, but the, the time that you guys invest in making sure that Frasier is, is, is still moving forward and still is very attractive to us. Yeah, I mean, we 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 spend a lot of time uh, on stuff like that. There are times we read one version of a script and and then we get an email that three in the morning from the writers and they say, well, here's the new script. Uh, and they will have changed it because they want to be intentional about where this character of Frasier and now all our characters are going. And uh, I really appreciate that. Every Everyone on set is just so excited to be working on this and to be there and really wants to make a good product my guilty pleasure on in in watching frazier on paramount plus is the fact that i will stop it and rewind it and study the craftsmanship when it comes to that writing and how you delivered it and i can't be the only one who does that because i mean you guys deliver that stuff so perfectly and i just want to know how you do it uh in terms of delivering it well you know i mean how how deep do you want me to go it's, <laughs> it's basically it's basically like playing catch you know 
there's it's it's in my mind it's like playing catch with an A. Yeah. Because if you drop the ball, you can't you can't pick it back up. You know, you have to, okay, let's, let's restart. Yeah. Let's reset. Uh, and, and everyone on set is so good at keeping that, that ball in the air. And, uh, it's like uh, watching tennis. Yep. It's people being competitive in a sense, at least characters, um, hitting a ball back and forth and you want to, Oh, and he says this and he says this and Oh, <laughs> he says this, he misses the ball. Sort of like a sport. I guess you do want to watch the instant replay. <laughs> Where can people go to find out more about you, Anders, and really get into everything that you're involved in? Uh, your local library, <laughs> um, uh, maybe side of a milk carton. I don't know. Uh, no, I, uh, uh, the internet, Possibly, I guess you could look me up, but you can also watch Paramount uh, Plus and Frasier on Paramount Plus. Aha. I love it. I love it. Please come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you, Arrow. I appreciate it. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Coming up next, I stump Coach Keenan. Yeah, the Mike Keenan, the Stanley Cup winner. Recording in progress. Okay. With his Indian stick, right? Is that your Indian stick, Arrow? It absolutely is. It's called a coup stick, yes. Yeah, there you go. All right, Mike Keenan's here. You'll have till just before 10 after. Go ahead. Wow, congratulations on a very successful journey, sir, and how faithful you have been. That It is, it is such a victory to see you continue to grow forward. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Uh, how part of... Uh, Part of my, uh, I, I guess I can't wait till I grow up. Ah! <laughs> Part of my youth. I, I totally believe in that because I still tell people I'm 17 years old and there's no way I am, but but, but inside, <laughs> I still have those visions that I want to accomplish things. Absolutely. So it, it's a good thing to stay young. So uh, mentally, uh, that's important. Did writing the book help you stay young? Because I always believe that when we write, we clear out the heart and soul and that allows new things to grow. Well, I hope that's that's the truth. I think uh, I've used the comment now this morning and other times that it was it made me dizzy <laughs> to write this book because there were so many different chapters and the different stops. But uh, uh, it, it it certainly brought out a lot of memories as we continue to speak about it. I say, oh, I forgot to put that in the book. Yeah, other stories that come out and flush out. So yeah, it's been a, a real. With Scott Morrison, uh, God bless Jay Greenberg earlier, who passed the start of the book, Hall of Fame Writers. They made it easy. Mark Messi did an incredibly kind forward to the book, so I'm appreciative of, of their work. Isn't it an amazing feeling when when other people become part of your new team as you grow forward? Because, I mean, as you just mentioned, all the people that you know that helped you do this, I mean, the teamwork is still there. Well, it really is, and behind the scenes, uh, Penguin uh, Publishers have uh, got a team of experts, uh, very successful publishing company in the world, and certainly North America, Canada, and the United States in particular. Uh, the teamwork that was necessary to put a book together is enlightening to me because I had no concept whatsoever about how a book is put all together, the, the all the work, the fact checking, the writing, the uh, the paper, the, the photos, whatever else is involved, the sales, the sales, and the and the marketing. So it, it's it takes on a whole new team, and and I'm appreciative of their work as well. When you talk about the fact checking, did you keep journals along the way so that you could go back to them at any <laughs> given time? No, I made Scott Morrison do that. <laughs> you know, that's one thing when you're a coach, you delegate. <laughs> you delegate the work. So uh, you give them assignments and tell them to report. <laughs> so, coming, yeah, no, he did, a, he did a super job. Coming from the state of Montana, I, we didn't have professional basketball or even football, but we had Canadian hockey. And that's how I found out about this game and played the game. And then, and then to see where it is today is just mind-blowing. It really is. Um, now that I've coached uh, not only in North America, but also in – Russia, China, and Italy recently, but uh, that that exposure is is something that you don't realize when you're just involved in the National Hockey League. But there's about 50 countries 
yep. that play hockey and I have organized hockey that play uh, for in the International Ice Hockey Federation uh, umbrella, you know, in the likes of South Africa, uh, Mexico, I can go Australia, go on and on. Of course, all, all the European countries and all the the uh, East Bloc co- countries and China now. So it just goes on and on. And you'd be surprised how many people in the world are exposed to hockey, which is which is great for us who love the game and being involved in it. But it's also enlightening for us to see that there are so many different uh, areas in the world and it's not always related to cold climate. Yeah. Now it's as it is the National Hockey League is not related to cold, uh, cold climate either. Yeah. I'm just amazed at how the game has now moved outdoors. I mean, we even with our own level of hockey here in Charlotte, I mean, it sells out instantly. People are there to see that outdoor hockey game. Yeah, that's a fun part of it. it it's uh, nostalgic, and it takes the players back to their youth. Most of them learn to play in outdoor rinks. Not all of them, but many of them. And uh, I think that's why it's exciting for them, and, it, and it's a exciting venue for the for the fans to go and and be outside because that's where the game originated Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now does the coach play a major role in the imaging and branding of a team because when i go to a game my eyes are always on the coach Uh, great question i think that uh, in some instances the the team takes on a certain personality and part of that personality I would think is impacted by the coach. And uh, I think that's probably true for all sports, uh, but particularly for hockey. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, you know, in hockey, one of the things that I love is the passion of the fan. And I, I, I will actually cry a tear when, when I'm over there at that gate, when the team goes out for the, for, to finish the night, because fans are there. They, 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 you know, they support them in such a huge way and with their jerseys and with, you know, just everything about them. They are real fans. Well, it's a real dynamic game. It's the fastest game in the world. you got people out on, the, on an ice surface now. It's different than than football, baseball, basketball. Uh, identify those sports. You can run out of bounds. You can't run out of bounds in hockey. You're going to get smoked into the boards, or you've got to get to the bench to get off the ice. So that's part of the the in the speed of 25, 30 miles an hour skating and the pucks being shot at 100 miles an hour. The reflex, the athletic. Uh, capabilities the athleticism of these players you know you're 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 going at that speed but you're on a blade that's probably a quarter inch wide and maybe one inch or two inches on the ice itself and you got a club in your hand that you could kill anybody pardon that expression (laughs) sorry for saying that but you know it's it's it could be dangerous and uh, that's why Fans love it because it's so dynamic. I still, particularly when you see it live. I still have my stick from the eleventh grade. I, I I will not ever give up that stick to anybody. Well, you're lucky that you didn't break it because yeah. my father, when I was in eleventh grade, said you get one stick a year if you break it. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to make a new one. <laughs> Oh, I had my, my st- uh, sticks that were broken. The thing is, and I would try to tape it. That's a stupid decision. You can't tape it and go play a real game of hockey. Well. Back in the day, sometimes that was the only uh, solution you had, so you had to figure it out. (laughs) When a player is sent to the penalty box, how do you get into their head to keep their mind still on the game and not in the reasons why they were put in that box? You know, that's a question, and kudos to you, as never being asked to me, ever. So... um, I think that uh, they have time to cool off and, and get refocused. Uh, they, they're sent to the, the sin bin, the penalty box, and once uh, they've gotten over the frustration or uh, the call that the official made against them, uh, they have time to, to reflect and, and get themselves re- reloaded. But uh, uh, I think you are the first and only fan ever to ever have asked me that question, and that's a great question. How do you think AI technology is going to change the game of hockey? <laughs> uh, that's uh, 
we're going to see that evolve as well, just as we we've seen real changes, equipment changes. Yep. Um, you know, the analytics have come into the game, but regardless of all of that, it's the instinctive values I believe uh, that make the difference in terms of greatness and success in the game. It's it's the spontaneity. Uh, look at Wayne Gretzky doesn't yeah. need artificial intelligence to tell him how to play the game. <laughs> he instinctively knew it. And I just identify him because he's had so many more points, but I had so many superstars in my career play for me. And and uh, the one great thing uh, that I, I was in tune to was that I played the best players the most. Not all, not all coaches do. And that's all I want. Get me out on the ice and I'll, I'll do my thing and, and I'll I'll follow what you would like in terms of uh, kind of guiding them uh, as far as a stru- the structure of the team play is concerned. But their their skill set, their ability is intuitive, and it's, it's as I just identified, it's so dynamic that they have to have that uh, mental skills as well as their athletic ability to to deal with it, to deal with the speed. And the deal with this game. Wow. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future, Coach. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you.